Welcome to Show Studio. It's our penultimate roundup, but we're going to be talking about a city that I think surprised us a little bit this season. It was certainly trying hard Milan. Um, I've got an amazing set of panellists to help me round up everything that's going on in the Italian fashion capital. But before we start dissecting and discussing all the shows, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, Mima. Good morning, I'm Mima Vigletto and I'm a creative consultant. Morning, I'm Richard Gray, executive fashion director, Sunday Time Style. Good morning, Hilary Alexander and I'm a freelance fashion writer. What was everyone's favourite show from Milan? It's a simple question, but actually people tend to find it a bit tricky. Were there any standouts? Richard, what struck your fancy? Prada. Prada. Why was Prada? Always. Always Prada. Yeah, just incredible. Just another way of thinking, a new way of thinking. Um, uh, Beautifully cinematic. um, Lots of beautiful clothes. Mm. I'm a bit old fashioned. I do like to see things that people can actually wear. Mm. Mm. You didn't find it a bit harsh? Yeah, but harsh in a good way that makes me jar and makes me when I come out of a Prada show I think to myself I know nothing at all and then a few weeks later I'm like actually I do know something and I know what she means Mm -hmm. I like that she challenges all the time that's an interesting thing that you say that because I feel like a lot of people when they talk about Prada they talk about her as kind of people say there's a designer for each city you know you have your Marc Jacobs you have your Christopher Kane you have your Prada Mm -hmm. do you think she really is the linchpin of Milan she kind of holds everything together and and pinpoints the season I guess in a way well I mean I think think there are other designers in Milan obviously but I think it's the one show that people really look forward to Mm -hmm. it's the one that it's a benchmark (laughs) it's a benchmark and it's Mm -hmm. the one outside where you can feel the tension before Mm -hmm. Um, and when you go in, and there's, and it's quite, it's quite chatty, but there's also a certain, there's something in the air, sense of respect and you think, them. what's she going to do now that's going to position us all for the next season? What's she going to say that we're going to talk about in years to come? Mm. I mean, look at those colours, mm. that clash. Mm. Do you th- it's interesting you mentioned that clash because there's always something slightly jarring about it. It's a word you use, Richard, and I'd like mm. to talk a little bit more about that. The designers that do kind of unsettle you because it mm. feels for me like you keep saying what's she going to do for the what's she going to make us think about for the next season mm. and is that her skill is that it always feels like she's ch- she's moving fashion forward whereas other designers perhaps aren't uh, I think, I yeah think. please go no ahead. go ahead I mean I'd, sorry I just wanted to say I, I I think exactly what you think about Prada that's what we are looking forward to I think Prada saved Milan for many years in terms mm. of creativity mm. and innovation this wasn't my favourite show of Milan or of Prada Funny, funny enough, but um, I thought it was a little bit weird. I thought it was a bit confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she'd, she'd be clapping at the fact you said called it weird and confused. <laughs> That's what she wants. Um, uh, well, okay, uh, good. Yeah, she sees she sees positive where we see negative, and yeah. and, and, and and beauty where we see ugly. Ugly, yes. Mm-hmm. And she famously yeah, likes I like that. I, I, I thought this was. A, a, Weird, but I don't know if you saw Rihanna in Paris with that um, yes, that's shirt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She looked yeah. amazing, and yeah. I was like, "Oh wow, now yeah. I get it." No, you, you know? get it. It was really amazing, yeah. But yeah. it's interesting. People keep saying this idea of "now I get it," and I, I wonder maybe that's one of the strengths of, of Prada. It well, definitely is the strength of Prada. It's that thing you don't quite get it at the time, and then it she's makes a little bit later. like contemporary art, where yeah. people are in front of it and like, "Do I have to understand something I'm missing?" I think Prada is that she provokes some intellectual thinking, and I love that. But usually. I don't know, I think I get it more, mm. <laughs> if I have to be honest. Yes. But it's almost like this will grow on me, I know. Mm. I will understand it. Yeah. It was probably more difficult than usual, I don't know, probably. Mm. It's almost like sort of hyper fashion. Mm. Mm. You know, it's beyond. Hyper fashion, yeah. interesting, mm. yeah. Mm. No, no, it's a very interesting concept. I also think it's anti shopping, mm-hmm. which is which is a curse on women's wear for the last five years, where, and it's come from the American markets, I'll call you out, uh, where, <laughs> where <laughs> and it's come from one specific person that's Anna Winter where everything has to it can be creative but it also has to be commercial there's nothing wrong with that and mm. commercial is not a dirty word mm. but I do think it affects how fashion shows are and what the images that people project for example I can I can name one show which is Kenzo which mm. is purely shopping mm. yeah totally and, it's, and, it, and it's it's created by shopkeepers Mm. They're designers, they're great, I'm absolutely, but, but you know that they have a, an eye for shopping. Mm. And, and I think that the old days of theatre and um, a moment might be on the wane. Mm. It's interesting that you say that because, and you mentioned the word cinematic when we started, because mm. with the men's and with this, it's something I think she's been toying with for a few seasons, yeah. this idea of something that's cinematic, and, and it was very obvious in the set as well, which was literally very sort of a real replica of a, of a theatre you had this kind of 
um, orchestra pit. And do you think that's something to do with why she's doing something that feels a little bit? It's, well, it's based. It's based on. Um, I really embarrassed myself backstage actually because I went. I went back because I, I knew what I kind of did. I, I say I didn't know what it, I did know what she was referencing, mm -hmm. and it's the most incredible film. And I, I tell anybody you probably know it, Hilary, to watch it. And it's called The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. Uh, the most incredible film uh, about uh, some uh, un un unrequited sapphic obsession mm -hmm. uh, and, and A for the interiors, B for the clothes and C for the makeup and mm -hmm. any fashion student should just go and watch it on YouTube now and, you, and you'll see the clothes in this film, just beautiful. Mm -hmm. But to me also there's a, almost like a sort of cartoon-ish yeah, quality, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know maybe it's the colour or the intensity or the exaggerated shapes there's something that's more hyper. Yes, yeah. hyper yes. is. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Projecting mm. beyond, you know, in a way, mm. a cartoon sort of is a, another version of reality. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And it's interesting just to talk a little bit more about this idea of theatre, and we we talked about it being cinematic, but also this idea of the fashion show as a sort of immersive experience, which is something she always does very well. Do you think that that's something you said you feel like it's on on the way out a little bit? Would you guys agree with that? That you feel like that being done in a really authentic way, not in a way where you get sort of a plucked on Instagrammable moment. I'm glad you bring that back because I wanted to comment on this and you stole my line because usually <laughs> I'm the one, but usually I'm the one here who says um, commercial is not a dirty word. Mm. Um, however, I also believe that if it becomes too much of that, it's useless to have a fashion yeah, show, mm -hmm. which is called a show for a reason. Mm. I think that things have started to change with the big 2008 crash where when I was still on the other side of the, you know, of this, I knew how it was hard to keep up to the, you know, the figures and stuff. Uh, groups are quoted on the stock exchange. There are many things behind that. If you don't grow, they put you in real trouble. Yeah. And so, of course, the designers are pushed by their shareholders to do something that is more instantly sellable. Then they realize that when it's instantly sellable, then it becomes boring, and the and critics also are be bad, copied. and nobody yes, Instagram yeah. and, to copy. and Topshop and H yeah. and M copy, and then they sue them. So it's very complicated. Mm. It's very complicated, and I think when you say theatrical, it's going away. I think it's they finding the right balance. Yeah. Yeah. Because funnily enough, I thought that Milan was probably the least boring in years. Mm. 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 And uh, I thought Paris was outstanding this year. Mm. Mm. And I, I do think, I do agree with you that the problem is America. Mm. Because when Vogue is read by 1.3 million people, they need to put commercial mm. stuff on their cover and that can ruin it a little yes, bit. I yes. mean, they consider Oscar de la Renta, with all due respect, the greatest designer of all time. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's good. But yeah, not that good. Uh, no. Exactly, <coughs> or, or I mean, it's, it's that Park Avenue good, mm, yes. you know, to go out for, for big things. So it's a complicated thing. Mm. I'd never know exactly how to discuss this, but it's complicated because if it goes too over the board, then it's irrelevant. Mm. But if it's too commercial, then it's boring. Mm. So what's mm. the solution, but guys? Talking about Milan and theatricality, don't you feel um, Roberto Cavalli's show, that, you know, that so-called Ring of Fire, yes, yes. was theatrical? Yeah, yeah, but it was almost... Dangerous. <laughs> I mean, it would have been <laughs> people were complaining that they were scared. There's lots of yes, hairspray in that was, room. You I know. know. You, could have, you, could have, you could have were toasted you marshmallows. You could. Were you no, there I physically? wasn't there. I wasn't okay. there. I've Think of all the fake fur that everyone's wearing the seeds, and it could have been a complete disaster. Everyone, yeah. like, I mean, <laughs> you and I with our shrimp, know, we would have died. died. Dead. <laughs> yeah. Very I would have, you know, I it could was, have cooked a but sausage. It was <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I think it's more about like Prada does it with the clothes, mm. you know, yes, yes, yes. the set, whatever. But mm. yes. or uh, you, Dolce Gabbana, you were mentioning before, yes. not completely my cup of tea. But I bow to the fact that they do that with the clothes. Right, Lee used to do it, and mm. we've had other examples this season. But fun enough, and and what and about I Moschino? haven't said that for long. We're getting there. Yeah. So <laughs> I really loved Gucci because it was the opposite of it, but it was Gucci. Mm. I think it was what Gucci needs to be to sell clothes. <coughs> and I yeah. thought she did a great job this season. Mm. Yeah. But then we can talk about Moschino in <laughs> Can I say consider? one thing about Prada? Yeah. Yes. Just on a purely, purely <laughs> yes. I keep shopping uh, is also yeah. not a dirty word, but I don't actually like it that much. <laughs> the, 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 there's one rule that came from Prada that will take any woman forward for autumn. That is the rule of three. Sheepskin coat, 
long sleeve pattern dress, a bit down DVF 70s style, yeah. and a boot. Yeah. Mm. You, that's all you need, girls, and, and you're there. Mm. Quite <laughs> 70s, actually. In, in, well, you also need 70s. about five grand. But, um, yeah, indeed. But the well, high street will be there, don't I think, <laughs> I think double that, triple that, yeah. especially yes, for the sheepskin exactly. coat. The sheepskin yeah. coat, maybe I forgot that. But <laughs> but yeah. It's just it's just idea with Prada is it makes <laughs> you think a lot, but there are these real kind of, like, I want that moments with her and I feel like she that I think that came across that season I know it was a difficult collection but that big sheepskin oversized coat yes mm. that's it's very there's an Get instantaneous she also that, she yeah. also went into the archive I think as well because there was a collection uh, I'm off uh, autumn winter 96 which was wow. the furnishing fabrics collection mm. do you remember when mm. when the foot when, when it was ugly beautiful was yes. first quite yeah, it might have been by you Hills I actually. think it probably was <laughs> it probably was and and there was a there was the long coats and it were they were all 70s wallpaper prints yes. do you remember and the piping there and the brown and the that, orange I yes don't. exactly that <coughs> yeah no you there's know a, there's a and there it is there look yeah yeah mm. the middle one yeah but that i think orange. that was what was the most exciting thing with this collection it was those colors because i think prada just owns colors she owns those combinations yeah. that you were talking about and i feel like, yeah it, and it's I, few houses have colors as a code i, I think, think it's really rare i think that what will happen next season uh, because of this or thanks to this is oversized jackets mm. because that's the, everybody always picks up something from yeah. mm. Mucha, mm. from nicolas from you know and and this time will be the probably and the scarf. old of and scarves yeah. again and those yeah. saucy red she did that, that in the men's show yeah. Yeah. Yes, with she the did. ties yeah. she did that's, yeah. that's a reference to her men's show the, the yeah. red boots there i think uh, will be the boots of autumn as well the mm. sauciest things you've ever seen in your life because mm. every no, everything's covered. Mm. We, it's not about getting your knockers out. Mm. It's not about skirts up to here. No. Um, there's well, something lovely some and discreet. Mm. But, but there always is. But the that's, yeah, I think that's what's interesting. There always is with Mucha, don't you yeah. feel? There's a yeah, kind of sexy, modesty, which we hate. you know, covered up. It's more sort yeah. of Reveal by conceal. Yeah. Boobs are the new brains. I mean, brains are the new brains. Brains are the new brains. <laughs> I thought you were saying that's me? next season. <laughs> Can you please define that for me? Meaning, brains are the new meaning, boobs. Boobs? meaning that bra uh, brains are the new boobs, i.e., a woman oh, does boobs. boobs. Yes, <laughs> I understood boobs. Oh, boobs. Yes, I, I thought you said boots as well. Oh, boots oh, no, are the new boobs. I think so now. Brains are the new boobs and boots are the new brains. Finally. I'm very happy about that. See, that's us done. Yeah. Milan, round season. it up. <laughs> Thanks, Milan. <laughs> let's talk on, on the notion of boots, not boobs. Mm. Let's talk about Gucci, which you mentioned me was something. Mm. I think that's the really boots great. that's going to be copied and seen everywhere. Yeah. God, yeah, those shoe fronts. Boots. They're amazing. Yes, Absolutely that's right. Amazing. Did no. you like Gucci, you guys? Hillary and yeah, I thought it was good. Yeah. Better. Better. Yeah, definitely better. Exactly. Like Bond Girl. Mm. And Which refined. They, yeah, when, when they hark back to the 60s, that's what, that's in fact, what you they want. weren't really. Were they doing clothes in the 60s? Wasn't it more just accessories? It was more accessories um, in the 60s. It was but, but, um, and also, that skirt is really important. That kind of just a? above your navel, yeah. kicky A line, uh, and, then, and then just. Well, you know, Gucci in here. the past, even if it was mostly uh, accessories and some double G stuff that Audrey Hepburn and people were wearing in Via Condotti. Gucci was always very chic and refined. Mm. And then, starting with Tom, even if he relaunched it, yeah. he lost a little bit that and became the sexy, sexual the thing, bank. which I yeah. think it's not Gucci. And mm. so it was, yeah, I mean, it did well. And I've seen Gucci's figures for many years when I was there. So mm. don't get me wrong, but it wasn't, you know, wasn't faithful to the brand. Yeah. This is Gucci DNA mm. in a mm. cool, refined way. And I think this show, will do a lot for the brand. We'll but bring the brand back to where it mm. should be. Mm. And it's sexy in a modern way. It's very interesting, I think, what Richard was saying about this idea of Prada being very covered up. Because if you look at this, even though the, the length was obviously a real focus on being very short, it is still this notion of being wrapped up yes. and covered up. You know, mm. that girl doesn't feel like exposed at all. She's got these polar necks on. I think that's quite yeah, interesting. Sexy she's very heroic. I think she's a very heroic woman mm. for, for autumn she's i don't you know i think she you know she looks as though she might have got a career she may have even got kids um, <laughs> but brains but are the brains the indeed yeah. but, but I, I think that i feel as though she's in charge and she's not a piece of furniture which you could argue she has been in the past with Completely, gucci she yeah. was merely an accessory a dolly bird arm on an candy arm. This doesn't mm. feel modern anymore. No, no, that's a really good point. I think you it's said it's really also it's not also so how women are are not. Mm, but it I'm down a bit of a feminist like that, I'm afraid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's down to shopping patterns, though, when you think about it, because I, I think it's such a simplistic thing. Of, and for ages, high fashion was about making women look like that because it was their boyfriends who were buying the clothes mm. and all their husbands. Whereas now, that does feel so 
outdated purely because if you're buying your own clothes and you have the income to do that, you don't want to buy clothes to make you look like an accessory to your boyfriend. Yes. Whereas I feel like for a long time... Well, it's about clothes both for women, women for women, yeah, women more than... The women generally just for women. Exactly. Though, yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. But I think yeah. that just Especially changed the minute that women yeah. started buying high fashion rather than men yes. buying it for them, yeah. which I think it's really interesting. She looks as though she's, she's going somewhere... You know, obviously she's walking, but bear with me. You know, she looks as though she has <laughs> something other than looking like some gorgeous bird with yeah, big hair. Mm. Expensive, mm. blonde, mm. you know. That, yeah. uh, the dress there with, you know, almost I like a double-breasted military effect it's on the bodice. It's very yeah. That's a gorgeous dress. And yeah, the styling yeah, really was beautiful. Dress. Usually I wasn't always very keen about the styling of her shows. This was perfect yeah. mm. Mm. To, for me. What Close else? First. What Stand else out stood show. out? What else did we really Marnie, like? Marnie, I think, was very mm. beautiful. And Dolce yeah. Gabbana. Interesting. Yeah, you've been itching to talk about oh. Dolce, so we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you love Dolce and Gabbana so much? Because of the fantasy and the theatricality, and I think it's something that Stefano and Domenico can do so well. You know, when they get hold of a theme, they really kind of work that theme. They don't just sort of reference it lightly. And to some people, it, maybe it's a bit OTT, but it's delightful. Do you know what I mean? It was sort of babes in the wood and little foxes and chipmunks. <laughs> they don't know how to spell lightly. It doesn't exist. No. In <laughs> but there's something um, kind of adorable about it. Mm. And again, you know, that big coat that we've been talking about, yes. we've seen at Prada, we've seen it you know, at mm. Gucci. Yes, they've done the big coat, but they've done it in their own, you know, I mm. sort of fantasy, fabulous little way. I'm really interested in this idea of primness as well because I feel like a lot of the, I feel like this season you really saw that kind of balance, not, not just with Dolce and particularly on the other collections, a lot in Paris, you saw that Valentino influence of something that was kind of girlish yeah, and pretty and everywhere. prim. Everywhere, exactly. Yeah. I Look at that dress, the third one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. so Valentino. So Valentino. I wonder yeah. why that kind of, that mood of something that is very feminine and girly but isn't about looking sort of sexy. I wonder why that's caught everyone's imagination <gasps> so much. And look at the owls. I know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a reaction. That looks a bit like it's from Kath Kitson. <laughs> <Yeah, don't laughs> but it could be Valentino. That was my only thing. What, the uh, purple Hillary. one? Mm. Well, in a way, I mean, the setting and everything is very yeah. dolce. And when they do that other shape, that's very dolce. But the more I've been looking at this show, the more I thought, why do they copy Valentino? So you brought it up. Mm. I, I, mm. I mean, copy, it's a big word. Sorry, Domenico and Stefano. But there is a lot of references. And I think that Valentino brought back that refined, chic woman mm. for whom sex is not boobs, mm. but brains. Thank you. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and there's a lot of the Valentino couture show here. Well, it's this kind Don't of virginal, so, you know, A bit, woman. yes. But funnily enough, when Valentino um, went, you know, that kind of tribal collection yeah. a couple of seasons back. I was actually thinking to myself at the time, there's it almost could be Dolce Gabbana. Mm. Yeah, maybe you're right. There's a little bit of, you know, right, yeah. there's a communication mm. there, isn't there? But I do wonder why that mood of kind of that prim, like I, I see it as primness, maybe that's not the right word. I'm interested in what you guys see it as, but that kind of idea of something very refined and almost untouchable, that woman, she's not there to be sort of sexy. She's just completely perfect, but not in a kind of well, there's, uh, yeah, it, I think there's a non-objectification coming through, and also there's a certain medieval yeah. feel mm. to oh this, yes. I think, as Look well, with, very the, the with the and, and the, even the hair, mm. you know, mm. feels um, uh, as though you can't touch her. Yeah. Why does that feel that's kind of... There's a certain deity quality, I think, exactly, to them as yeah, well. They, they really do feel... It feels quite virginal. That, see, yeah. that's very proud of that. Yes. On the, on the, you know, the that one here, the, the military, black. yeah. Mm, completely. But it's not just because it's winter, the covered up. No. Mm, no. There's something more, so. isn't there? Yes, there is. I don't think so. I think it's a reaction to the overly sexy of the Gucci's, of the... Mm. Uh, Cavalli. Of course, uh, the Cavalli's, mm. exactly, and the Versace's, and but the, the, the like overly tight and skin out. I think all this is mm. a reaction. But do you think it's also in part a reaction to the reaction to that? Because I feel like the reaction to that was all that minimal that you got, that kind of oversized, the cocoony shapes, very clean lines that we got with, you know, like Celine and that. And that whole aesthetic, I felt like that was a reaction to that. And then I wonder if the Valentino thing is a reaction to that minimalism as well. You know? Do you know? I yeah. Well, <coughs> I, I, you speak to retailers, and the one thing on a shop floor that makes a woman buy a dress is that it has to have the thing, mm. the it, mm. um, that all shopkeepers mm. 
know and mm. buyers know when they see a dress. And none of these dresses are, even that purple one there, it's a simple shift shape with a, mm. an elbow uh, length sleeve. But you go up to that and it's worked. Mm. This, it, it, it's kind of, there's an equation in a woman's head, oh, uh, you know, X equals Y, so I'll buy it. There's, there's work in there that deserves the £1,200 price point. Mm. So buyers now are looking for the X factor with all everything because there's, there's too much at risk at the moment. Mm. You can't just be, you know, buy this, buy that. There's too much out yes. there. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You've got to be such an editor now, mm. like, like never before. Mm. So the, the role of buyers is more and more important for the commercial yeah, success? I mean, they're, they're creative directors now, they're, they're buyers, they're obviously whizzers with calculators. Mm. It, it's on their head. Mm. You know, if, if, if buyers were 100% perfect, there wouldn't be such things as sales. Mm. So, so the, the pressure are, is on buyers at the moment and they're responding. And also the power of the online, we've talked about this before, mm. how people like net porte have discussions with designers and say things like, whether this is off the record or on, I, I know it happens, can you do that dress with the uh, yeah. length yeah. here? Uh, that that length won't sell in the in the states, mm. but la that length will. Do me that in pink. Mm. Th this happens all the time. It's interesting a lot when you see how the online and um, online retailers as well work with the younger designers because I feel often you can really see how much they know what will sell because they they'll want to work with a kind of young name, but they won't buy from their collection. Yes. I'll say make us a, a backpack or a yeah. jacket, yeah. and we'll, and they'll do like an event mm. with yes. the young designers making them a jacket. Yes. And I think that's quite interesting because it sh it shows so clearly that they know the favorite game, our favorite game. <laughs> Terrible, I'm saying this, but okay, our fav uh, Style's favourite game at, at any fashion week is to spot the net dress. Mm. So spot the Natalie Massonet dress that you know has specifically <laughs> been made for an online audience because it's slightly bodycon, mm. it's below the knee, there's a sleeve there, yeah. mm. and it pops with a print. Mm. And it's that, not too low. And it's not too low. Yeah. Mm. So it, it appeals to all age ranges and all occasions. You put it with a hat I'm for learning. a wedding and, yeah. a, and a spike for a night out. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and that, That's and, so boring. Well, this is my back thing back yeah. to shopping. I, it, I really, it irks me some why. It's a bit Anna yeah. Winter too. I'm yes. not saying that. It no, it's good because I, I wonder if yeah you get this a lot. I always find it endlessly frustrating looking at the London runways where you just see those kind of cocktail frocks that are just in there, and, and it's not really fashion. It is just shopping, and yeah. and maybe that's why we were talking about why Milan felt great this season. Maybe it was an element of it felt like people were reclaiming their codes rather than the kind of codes of shopping a little mm. bit more. But also, you know, what you just described as the net dress for me, it's the London dress very much. You know, well, not being well, from precisely. here and have now being here for a while. I don't, I don't see women having the guts to move on. And so mm -hmm. you go to places where women are lunching, not these kind of mm -hmm. women, yeah. and they all dress the same. I mean, with this, that kind of dress well, and those kinds of... the chairman of the BFC? <laughs> Natalie <laughs> Massonet, but, but uh, she's not like that. She's more modern there. No, there. I know she's she is. More, I, I mean, I, Natalie I'm doesn't joking. look like that. I'm joking. But what I'm trying to say is that if you go and see women on lunches in Milan or in Paris or in New York, there is that style, which is very different, but yeah. th they are mm. the same, especially mm. I would say probably London and New York, not the same, but very much the same within. Mm. And while, well, I think designers, they're trying now to move on from there, you know, to move on from that cocktail dress, which is so boring. Everyone's trying people to move style them but it's they, it's they style it's by difficult. Rachel Zoe, you no, know, they're like copying that. You know, I you, you know, in defense of in defense of frocks in general, <laughs> yeah. they work. Mm. There's nothing difficult about pulling on a frock that has a bit of pop, fits where you know, fits where it should. I'm wearing one. And yeah, but you don't look like that. You look much more modern and yeah, with black and, tights and, and yeah. elegant. And, and you look fantastic, by the way. <laughs> um, I mean, cool that dude. frocks in the middle wouldn't make me think of a woman of lunch. No, 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 not at all. But a, a dress works mm. for any woman. Oh yeah. You don't have to think about it. And it's one piece. Mm. You know, one action. Yeah. Done. Job done. Yeah. yeah. But do you not think that oh, don't have to we've talked about how online makes the dress work, clothes? But do you not think that also online is killing the dress? Because if you think how. People Instagram so much. If you wear something to a wedding now, you know you can only wear it once because it's online. It's not like it's just the 100 people that are there that will see it. Do you not think that's also killing the dress because it's making people not want to buy something they can only wear once? And dresses, especially a printed dress, it's even more kind of once you've worn it once, you can't wear it again now. And I wonder if that's also leading into it's the very separate thing. But if you're not a celebrity, nobody cares if you no. wear it. But I think there is an element, twice. even for girls, you know, who who use Facebook and and they don't and want Instagram. to be seen It used to be twice. they'd buy one dress for their three summer weddings. Now you. 
you've gone to the first wedding, mm. it's all over mm. Facebook and, and I wonder if that's why girls are wanting to buy separates more because then they can wear that skirt three times with different... You're yeah. speaking yeah. experience, different. aren't you? I am speaking I can, experience. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. But you can always accessorise a dress, don't you know, different coloured tights, yeah. different shoes. But not those kind of dresses that are hats. so printed, you know, the kind of the, that, the, that dress that ruled like for the last five years, you know, that mm. printed Peter Plotto Mary, mm. that kind of dress that was like such a gorgeous, you just Ugh, wore the dress yeah. on a pair of heels. Yeah. I feel like that was, I think people just got bored of the fact that once they'd worn it, they almost yeah. just couldn't wear it again. Yeah. Because it was so also, they were ripped off left, right and Chelsea. Yeah. The high street <laughs> were doing such brilliant rip-offs. Mm. Mm. I mean, Mark Suspensers were doing a fabulous line in Mary Catranzu-esque. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the nature of the beast, but yeah. you're right, you know, perhaps it's coming to an end, perhaps separates will come back the trousers again mrs prada has been wearing trousers a lot mm. <laughs> what's Yay, it mean trousers are back you remember yeah. lou when we were at stephen jones party last week that mm. dress i was wearing you were convinced was mary i Catanto. know i thought it was mary Catanto. It was and it was what top, 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 top shop top shop in go. glasgow actually <laughs> to be precise <laughs> but it's it funny great. because it when people like you wear that people would assume that it's you're very lucky because people would assume it's the real thing and so mm. you can wear you look rich. high street as much as you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you Little do they know. You, because <laughs> you're naming fashion, you know. Yes. And then there are people yeah. that wear the real one and we all assume it's Marks and Spencer. <laughs> so but it's interesting this idea <laughs> of um, uncopyable fashion because I feel like that comes through a lot in, mm. yeah. in focus on texture. And yes. And I feel like Mrs. Prada always plays with that in a really interesting yeah. way. She does hand does work. She yeah. can't be copied. Or yeah. if it was copied, it would look absolutely horrible. Yeah. I feel like yes. sometimes she's having a bit of a joke. Yeah. Those faces was definitely well. That. Those trousers two winters ago uh, that were seventies, like yes. purple and green, yeah. mm. they've been knocked off by mm. the high street. Yeah. But they, I could spot them out from yeah. Yeah. a distance. But they tried on those things, mm. but mm. not many things can be copied. It's a bit mm. like the new pound coin. The new what? The, the new pound, pound coin yeah. is is a bit like the old threatening bit where you've got silver there and gold in the middle. It's the and it's oh, got a lot more I've seen it. It's a bit like oh, really? I'm just being topical. You yeah. see, <laughs> but everyone's ripping off the pound coin doing fake. It can be maybe a fake. We're doing the two pound coins new separates. Yeah, and they've right got more sides. Like it's an octagon or something. Isn't it's it? Yeah, yeah, it's, shape. yeah. I didn't know about. I know. I didn't know. About. I feel I really behind the news now. Should we talk about Moschino? Yeah, let's talk about Moschino. Talking about. Can I leave? Yeah, because what I hear, what I think. This, this kind of really does tie together everything we talked about, which is the idea of fashion that's built for the internet and also fashion, because it was some of the pieces you could buy straight away. Yeah. So it's all the kind of modernity that we've been discussing thrown into one collection. And it all has got Anna De La Russo written all over it. Yeah, no. who's wearing it the very next yes. day. But the not only thing I like here is the hair. <laughs> the wigs you like. Yeah, I love the hair. Oh, it's a bit, I it's a bit like Well, yours. I wish I could have that band like so short, it. I can't. But I really love the hair. I'm, uh, Are we bored of it already? Problem. I think that's the problem with it. You kind of I'm in like two minds about this. Tell you me say what you think, because I know it's controversial. <laughs> well, it's, it's all controversial. I think that there is a fine line uh, that's been crossed here, because when the idea and the showmanship is this, it's not nothing to do with the clothes, you know, mm. it's just, mm. oh, my idea is to knock off Chanel yeah. and make it into McDonald's. Well, yeah. big, I mean, yeah, fun, but do a short movie for YouTube, not a show, you know, with Moschino. Yeah. And also I have too much respect for Moschino, the man, and what yeah. he did. Yes. It's not this. No, it's the not. press should stop saying, oh, you reference what Moschino was. No, 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 no. I was alive. I was in Milan and that's not Moschino. So was what I. Did. Moschino was exactly. a very political Franco, brand. Yeah. It was very political, it yeah. was very deep. The, what yeah. he did was amazing. He had uh, he lived too short. Anyway, I'm not going into but that. You, do you remember this? That? And also one last and then I give you the floor. For <laughs> <laughs> this is ugly also. It's ugly Chanel, it's ugly McDonald's mm. and apparently McDonald's is going to sue or whatever because oh, really? they use their... Mm. Did you read about that? No. You guys have, well, must have written about that, no? Uh, well, the arch, yes, I the read it about yeah. the fact that... I thought that he would have contacted There's a problem of, of, of um, Copyright. IP, yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm anyway. just going to, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I'm talking about Franco Moschino. Yeah. Were you at that wonderful show in Milan? It's a long time ago, more than 20 years, I think. No, I wasn't at the show, I was and still in university, but I was following it. The show started, I think two models came onto the catwalk, then suddenly the music stopped, the lights went up, and Franco himself walked on to the stage. And at first everyone thought it was a trick. And he's saying, no, it's all, that's it. I walk. No, bye. Goodbye. Oh, I don't know about that. And then? And nobody could believe it. And it was <laughs> true. And that was the show. And that was, he, then he walked off. <laughs> and there was 
there was no show. It was, but there was a meaning yeah. to that. Yes, because yeah. he, yeah. wa he wanted to make a statement. But remember when yeah. he launched um, ch uh, Cheap and Chic? Yes. yes. There was such a message to mm. the world at the time. It yeah. was, and it's not this. Well, I'm sorry, fast food is not something yeah. political that yeah. you put in a fake Chanel thing. But isn't this a sign that fashion just can't be political anymore because people just don't get it? And I think that you mentioned you know, how many people go, oh, he's referencing original, you know, and I think the thing is people don't want fashion to be political. This almost felt like it was completely at odds with with what's going on in the world and I think for me it was just a sign that people just fashion can't try well, if it has to be political then let it be you know like yeah. the, 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 let it be in a real way not this mm. you know uh. what was your take on it Richard? Um, two, I have two minds um, <laughs> the first when I, when I was there it was so loud and, and it was mental because mm. I mean imagine how packed it was and it was a bun fight to get in I mean a real scrum and the, uh, I think we, we were yeah, we were just. I was just behind Rita Ora. We came in late. <laughs> like we came you. in late, and then there, everyone was booing. But she was sure she was on the catwalk. She went on the catwalk, and the and the photographers took pictures of her because mm. remember the cat was raised. Yeah. You don't really see see that. That was a heart to the pass. Um, and then Katy Perry came in twenty minutes later. They went mental booing her. I thought this is interesting. It's like the old days, and yeah. I thought, is yeah. Susie going to walk? Susie, please walk. It's yeah. such a statement. And she did. I think it. Matches walked. Really? The bias from Matches walked. Um, uh, anyway, so my thoughts are: firstly, I hated it. I thought it's mm. dreadful. Um, and and uh, and then my second thought when I when I walked out of that, and and especially when I heard certain journalists saying, "Oh, it's just absolutely disgraceful," over, and then I was like, "Oh God, I hate your snottiness." And then I started thinking about it, thinking, <laughs> "Well, actually, you know, it's all about age, because the people who don't remember it the first time round will absolutely be all Love over it, it yeah. i.e., the Instagram generation. Yeah. A because it's Instagrammable." Mm -hmm because you look like and something colourful. on a picture and it's great for selfies. B, because it's all nice little pickup pieces. Mm. So those long chain Moschino bags will walk out mm. and, the, and see the fact that you can buy it straight off the catwalk. So, that was smart. So, mm. but, which is an old Burberry, I mean Burberry would do yeah. it, yeah, in, done it in, before. in their shops. Yeah. Um, but that's what I mean about how fashion can't be political. Doesn't it make you sad that that young generation, you know, they don't, they don't want anything that moves them or, or makes them think they just want something that looks good in the picture. Yes, yes. Uh, I remember um, Colin, who, Colin McDowell, who comes on here a lot, uh, who I love if you're watching, but he did <laughs> say to me when Nicholas was at Balenciaga, oh, it's not Balenciaga. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the Balenciaga that you know, but that doesn't mean it's not Balenciaga. It's a different take. It's a different mood. It's a completely different customer. Oh, I don't mind about that, but he and, and everybody was saying he referenced Moschino. It's, that's crap. Yeah. That, exactly. Mm. Crap. So that's Nicolas crap. never said, I mean, Nicolas mm. was <coughs> interpreting Balenciaga yeah. yes. and that's what he was saying. Yes. But, this, but also, I don't like ugly and vulgar and I think this is... Both. Do you know what? We, we, we ran backstage to, um, to speak to, yeah. to Jeremy afterwards and uh, you can always tell how, how, it, how it's gone down with the girls, whether they're smiling or not, because they never smile. They, they're knackered. They've been to New York, London, now Milan. They're crying when their makeup goes on. They're all upset because mm -hmm. they've worked so hard, very long hours. But those girls were laughing and joking. And we watched the young oh. Russian girls go up to him. And these are the, you know, they're automatons. They don't have any character on a catwalk. <laughs> but they came to life. Jordan mm -hmm. Dunn was just incredible. I've never seen a girl move like it. It's like mm -hmm. the old Naomi days. Mm -hmm. and, and the girls said, th we're thanking him. And not in that, in that way, oh, thank you for all that rubbish. They were genuinely saying, I've had so much fun, I've adopted this character, I've really worked the catwalk. They just don't do that But do you think days. that's something to do with the show, the fact, as you said, it was a raised catwalk, which feels very sort of old school, that they were even just allowed to move like that. Is that to do no. with the clothes, or is that just to do with the well, fact? Well, it's, it's, it's all those factors. It's, it's the mm -hmm. fact you've got an audience, the fact you're on a stage, the fact that the, shows are, the clothes are just mental, mm -hmm. uh, pumping music, all, all that, you know, the lights. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they don't know. exactly look happy, though. No, I know, but I know. But when when jo when the sort of um, the the car crash Chanel <laughs> section <laughs> came down, uh, that they, they were really uh, owning it. There were actually pieces to yeah, buy but, as well. But like, Richard, mm. I don't really care about <laughs> how happy the girls mm. are made. I'm I'm. I'm, I'm caring about fashion here. I think the young I mean, I care about their well-being. Don't look, get me wrong, but I mean, you're, you're not um, you're not in a position to dictate what's fashion and what's not fashion. This is a new fashion for a new 
youth group who will buy into it. When when I you don't were think young, it will last. when you were young, yeah, I don't, I'm not saying it will, but when you were young and you and and people wearing I don't know flares or whatever, or da, 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 you're not that much older than me, but but um, <laughs> thing, things were new and shocking and the old school poo pooed that. Yeah, uh, it's bound to happen, and I'm sure Jeremy will be no, really happy about the I, fact that. I, allow me to disagree. I mean, I know I'm I'm not the age of that those girls, but I think I worked in this industry enough to get it yeah. and and be quite relevant to what's going on. Yeah, I think this is not sustainable. I think that. Moschino thing that probably sold out the day after the show, which was a good idea, will be forgotten in six. I mean, yes, of course. Mm. The that's, difference that's between the this and this. Miucha Prada, I mean, it's yes. that. Yes, but you're comparing apples with oranges. No, I this know. is this is not that. This is not what we've been talking about prior to this. Mm. Th this is something else. It's Instagrammable, throwaway, mm. catwalk fashion for a different generation. And a bit of a joke. And, and a joke. But that generation cannot afford it. Well, yeah. they'll buy the bags and they'll buy the belts mm. and they'll they'll wear the belts in different ways and they'll cross their bags and they'll do new things. And I, I'm absolutely, you know, I'm not decrying your opinion at mm. all, but I do think, and I, it took me You call me old and old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're so old-fashioned. Uh, it took me three weeks to realise this and I, I was actually, maybe, maybe it isn't speaking to me. It's not yeah. speaking to me. You see, I, I get all those things that you're saying, but... I also do not think that it's clever. No, I'd, I'm at all. not necessarily, and no. I think the only person Jeremy is referencing is himself. And I think he's done a riff like this countless times. Mm -hmm. Give him a theme and he works it to death. And there's always a kind of Chanel, you know, rip off this, you know, whether he's doing, you know, handbag um, print or mm -hmm. checks or any one of the other thousands of things he's done before in the past. Mm. So was the clever yeah. thing just that buy straight from the catwalk thing? Is that what was the mm. cleverness to do something that was fast food that you could buy straight away? Maybe. I, th I, think it, I think it was just a tongue-in-cheek reference to mass consumption and da -da, but not necessarily that clever. I've mm. never said no. it was clever. I, I, no. ju I just think he, he's caught a moment. Mm. But fast yeah. food. And, that's, and yeah, in six months later, like right, yeah. the moment's not that moment. So what's he going to do next season then? Well, we'll see. Let's mm. see if he's up to it. Coca-Cola. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and so what? You know, yeah, right? yeah, I guess that's the thing of whatever he does next season, it'll be like, pfft. yeah. Mm. And I mean, you know, you mentioned fast food. Mm. I mean, you see the empty containers, you know, scattered all over the pavement, yeah. and look what fast food creates: it's, obesity. It ain't, so it this ain't Lee or, or you're Sean not going to get into those clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <It's, laughs> no, if you eat fast food, food, no. <laughs> it's really sad. I think. No, I found it like I get very precious about stuff like this, so I'd probably be a bit silly. But when, you know, I think we all, everyone hates that element of fashion, that kind of fast kind of consumerism and that whole yeah. street style explosion mm. and all that kind of the pace that's killing great designers and making, you know, everyone look completely mad. You know, someone got hit by a car at Fashion Week posing for street style. It's oh. completely bonkers. So to see <laughs> that, kind of all that awful element, that gluttonous aspect, put up there like, on a catwalk of a mm. brand that is so cherished, there has to be an element of you that you find it a little bit sad. Because Moschino's an amazing brand, and it's not like some young designer doing it. He's doing it under the name Moschino, he's not doing it under the name Jeremy Scott. Mm. So I think it does make you a little bit like, oh, is this what fashion's come to? I'm sure they're very nervous there, yeah. though. Mm. You know, the, the old, <coughs> in, the, in, the pa in the pattern room, and I, I just wonder what they're thinking. Mm. Mm. And also, they had a lot of PR around this, but it, it's going to disappear. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I'm think it's not sure. even going to disappear. It's just the fact you can't wear it. Imagine trying to wear that one of those McDonald's bags next season because everyone was wearing them this season. You know, yeah. It's, mm. Those pictures are just so they've just gone everywhere. I just feel like Ooh. it's epitome of fast fashion in the sense that it's it, it's done in like two weeks. Mm. It's I don't crazy. even like hamburgers. <laughs> What, what do you think Carl thinks about that fake Chanel suit in McDonald's But he loves colors? Jeremy Scott. Yeah. But does he like the fact that if someone goes around like that, and not everybody is following us now, you know, commenting on this, they would think it's a bad Chanel suit. Mm. Mm. I yeah. mean, I wouldn't be happy if I were Coco herself, thinking mm. that's not what I do, and people will think it's Chanel. Well, it's strange as well, because Chanel is very popular. I wonder what, I wonder what, I wonder what, what Bauman, I wonder happy. what he thinks about Bauman. Yeah. No, it's interesting because Chanel are very precious about that. You know, they sent all that stuff about that you can't call something a Chanel mm -hmm. type bag or a Chanel type. I remember Chanel shoes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wonder what they do feel about that when they're 
I think they're letting it go because they mm. think it's not going to last and probably nobody mm. will buy that suit. So mm. Mm. hopefully it might work in their favour. You never know. It might the signals speak to a different generation that they're not speaking to, perhaps who they only sell lipsticks to. The quilting, the gold. But do you not think Chanel chains. are trying to get that generation? You know, the trainers, Cara. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, by what they do yeah. themselves. Well, yeah. well, precisely, mm. uh, trainers on a couture catwalk. Mm. Mm. Bonkers. <laughs> but Let's then Carl referenced that whole idea of consumer culture. In the supermarket. But yeah, setting the, his ready to wear show in a kind of supermarket. Yeah, there was a strange synergy between yeah. this and then mm -hmm. the Chanel supermarket. Food's everywhere in fashion at the moment, isn't it? Because it, Anya High March was in well, the, with the, with the She was the first one. She was, she was. Doing that. Uh, Nobody was mentioning it, but she did it yes. one mm. week before. Yeah. Mm. Why do you think that is? Do you think this idea of do you think people are just so it's like they want to bring just a fashion to normal life? Yeah, yeah. and also yeah. I think and also the normality of it. They just would like people to conceive fashion like yes. something that it's for everybody, yes. which mm -hmm. is not because the prices are outrageous, but yeah. it's a, it's a, an exercise on putting mm -hmm. it down to daily life, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, well, so well in much the same way that supermarkets started selling clothes. Do you think That's George right. and Astor? Absolutely. F and F. Yeah, mm. yeah. Fred and Florence or whatever they're called. Fred, absolutely. Yeah, what? absolutely. Also, I think this idea of, um, of normality and humour is big, isn't it? I think there's nothing that fashion designers want to show that they have more than a sense of humour. I feel like that seems to be such a big a big thing at the moment, everyone's trying to make the point that they're funny. Well, well yeah. everybody's trying to make the point that they're funny. Everybody's yeah. trying to be something else. Everybody's uh, projecting avatars on themselves. Facebook, everybody's fake. Mm. Everybody's everybody's manipulating an image of themselves mm. Mm. I, i'm thinking a lot it's an interesting because i'm thinking a lot about identity at the moment and mm. how we how we portray ourselves on facebook and on twitter and on social media and and how we pose in pictures doing ludicrous mouths mm. selfies it's exactly it's not you mm. it's a it's a projected image of you and i think it's it, it really is this is when fashion gets interesting mm. when 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 it comments on 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 who we are uh, uh, and and it's a, it's a perfect social barometer mm. Mm. no it's true I, did we i think we all felt that a lot this season like fashion was it wasn't us looking at the fashion it was the fashion looking back at us as well it was that strange yeah. thing yeah. it was odd wasn't it well milan still had shows like bottega veneta that oddly enough very few people talked about this season, and I thought but do it was But do you not think that's a shame? Because if something's just good, it was that's just not enough good. now. Or, Max Mara? Or it was pretty good too. Mm. See, I'm always a fan of Max Mara. I'm the coach. Sport Max yeah. Mara. Yeah. I know. I've I don't, I don't know, I can't yeah. comment on Armani, because I must say I don't remember it. How was Armani? Uh, uh, Pastels, <laughs> Yeah, I only went to Emporia, I didn't go to... Okay, Emporia. but I thought the Bottega Veneta show was v exquisite mm. for the brand, it was... This is money. It was, it was elegant. It was back to those, you know, dresses, but not that easy dresses. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, th there was something very smart about that, mm. and I think there is a big return on chic. Mm. Yes. And, Good uh, word. And mm. uh, yeah, and uh, and people want this. But mm. also, I mean. look at those dresses. They would be extremely difficult to try and replicate exactly. in any way in the yeah. high street. That's why I think some of the best collections where the seasons are the ones that were completely uncopied. But I think that's why we all love Marnie because everything mm. from I know fairs ever at the moment. I think fair, that's the reason fairs ever because you can't copy it. You know, it can't all that kind of stuff no. that is just impossible to do a high street Definitely. version of. And Beautiful. I don't know why nobody really spoke about this mm. this look show at this year. It was it moved on mm. from himself, mm. Thomas, and I think. This is an exquisite show. Yeah, I, I love, love that beautiful. little dress. It was absolutely yeah. beautiful. And like what Gucci did, they did something which is very close to their DNA, if mm. Bottega has mm. a DNA in clothes, which they don't. But I mean, it's so... in. It's, it, and it's, it's quite it's modest. modern, modest, yeah. regional, modest. and And it's that run, modern no? modesty, you know, that, yeah. that look that we've seen. It's, it's beautiful. Not, but that jumper over yes. a mid-length skirt. And the sleeves to the so heel, beautiful. high neck. Mm. I want to buy it all. I want to be mm. much wealthier and buy it all. <laughs> 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 Let's talk a bit about Marnie as well, because you were saying that you thought it was really, really great. Did yeah, you like really Marnie good. as well, Richard? Yeah, I thought it was very good. Yeah. Very good. I like... I like because uh, I think this is a they share customers. Yeah. Tegra and Marnie. Sure. It's it's um, yeah possibly you're y right. you know it's I think she's the old Jill customer mm. uh, where we talk in, in cliches of she's the gallerist she's mm. the writer but she is this mm. woman does exist and she does visit galleries and she does read loads of books and she is fabulous mm. and fabulously and wealthy and fabulously wealthy <laughs> and she dresses impeccably. 
Mm, mm. It's not, you know, this is the other side of fashion. Mm. The older girl who is just, you'd have a conversation with. Mm. There's that sort of intellectual. Yeah. It's um, interesting you see the old dual customer feel. as well. Do you, do you agree with that, Hilary? This idea of this. Slightly. Mm. But I feel more that this That's customer for Marnie mm. has got a, a boho streak. Mm. Yeah. Whereas at Jill, you would never have described her clothes as remotely. No. Bohemian. Mm. No. She I liked think, to print. I though, think this yeah. woman wears as wears Marnie, Prada, yeah. and Celine. Yeah. Mm. Which is me, basically, yeah. and yeah. Top, some top shop. But, um, mm. <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's, I think that's the category, you know? Yes. It's the fabulous. Anti sexy, anti. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Overly nothing to prove. La yeah, yeah, nothing to prove. That I mean, you'll be noticed with that fur coat in the middle. Yeah. Can we talk a little um, bit about what we think about <laughs> this fur being used in a really seasonal way? Because we talked about it on some of the panels that we're doing throughout the season. I think we should talk about Fendi as well. Yeah, yeah, a segue sure. because yeah. that was with the drones. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's talk about Fendi. Oh. Okay. Did you go to the show? What look did you think look of in it? The well, um, Fendi used. <laughs> we had an email from the PR uh, beforehand saying, "Oh, we're mm. going to use drone cameras." What? What are these? And then, I, and then I remember thinking, oh, drones, like the, the little helicopter yes, things yeah. Yeah. with cameras on. So they're busy going around your bloody head like that. I'm thinking, my bald spot, my bald spot. <laughs> and, and all this is live beamed onto, onto a TV. Um, and, and, and so, and then, uh, so they're here, that you can hear them buzzing. And for the first five minutes, I'm thinking, if one of those drops on my yes. head, yeah, you can. <laughs> I mean, we all remember your thing, yes, Matthew, didn't we? When the no DVF, DVF, when the thing anyway. That's another Lighting story. rig fell. Lighting rig fell. You were all right though, weren't Stretch you? Stretch it out. That's yes. like a modern. This is the modern version of that. So, the, so listen, these drones. Amazon is developing it to deliver goods to you your door. You can buy them. You can buy them on Amazon. They're going to have drone deliveries. No. So you, yes, you order a book, and this drone thing picks it up. Flies. Oh, amazing. I saw them the first one on a TED conference two years ago. Yeah. And yeah. now they're already on the catwalk. Yes. At what conference? At the TED conference. Right. Yeah, and it was really something that we had one in the room and we're like, wow. And then suddenly it's at Fendi. I think yeah. it was quite genius. Yeah, really, really yeah. clever. Yeah. But the fur in Didn't that show. Yeah. yeah. Like what? Fur. Oh, the fur. Yeah. Well, it is about. It's fur, all about it? fur. And, and I d it did make me think, ooh. Well, that's you know, it, it's, that's it's, what they were born but, for. But more, I mean, more, you know, then now they're putting it on sunglasses, they're putting it on shoes. It's just absolutely everywhere. But the everywhere. men's it was the fur runway. The runway yeah. was made for runway. Yeah. You know, but um, which they said would be reused, but where was it this season? Well, Gucci used to have sheepskin catwalks or mm. like shag pile. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It was In the early days when Tom was and the it. fabulous spotlights. Do you remember? There's, the, yes. that there's was just incredible. Of, yeah. There's a lot of A-shaped in and the look main at the hoods again. in Milan. Did you notice? I mean, the skirts are high-waisted and A-shaped. Mm. There's yeah. a lot of far from the body mm. going on, which I'm a fan of, so I'm very What's happy. What's that Japanese word that, um, I can't remember, I've brought this thing up. Origami. Where, where, you, where it's, it, the, it's, it's, the, it's the space between the fabric and the body. Uh, a com, uh, Ray's really interested in Miyake too, more Miyake. Um, there's a, there's a, they have it. I know the word you're talking but, about. But that's, really that, that area between the body and yeah. the fabric is, is around as well. So mm. it's like, you know, the, the, cocoon, the cocoon and the bigger yeah, and the, the shoulder open. that sits off. So the area between fabric and body, mm. um, I think, is up for discussion at the moment no, as well. No, definitely. It's interesting. I do want to go back to this fair thing a little bit just to talk about why it's. Because obviously, fair is Fendi, Fendi is fair, but. But why are we seeing so much fur over and so much fur used in, in a fashion way? It's not fur used as a kind of a classic. A classic. The techniques have, have changed yeah. overnight. You know, you, uh, in, the, in the 80s, uh, fur was heavy and, and it was laboured and, and it was, it was inc you were sweating. That Milanese long mink coat, you know, you look 70 and everybody, everybody looked and it's very ageing fur. Well, but not so much now. This is this is what's interesting. Yeah. There are new shaving techniques. There are new ways of uh, putting one like uh, snakeskin yeah. next to fur, mm -hmm. fur next to leather, mm -hmm. leather with a trim. Uh, all all mm -hmm. these these various Don't you think and this colors. Whole, it's down to Carl though, Carl Lagerfeld yeah. and Fendi because I remember when he did that first shaggy fur, shaggy chic. Yes, a big that old must be, Fendi. Yes. Mm. And he made fur look bohemian and rugged and ripped mm. and savage and sort of strange mm. and lightweight. Mm. And people absolutely loved it. And that was, again, that's 20, 20 odd well, years ago. Well, it's interesting seeing fur being, uh, it's interesting what you mentioned there, like, it looks strange. Because we're seeing fur used in a way that isn't about looking you know, classic and expensive. It's about tying into all these things we've been talking about, looking at sort of anti-fashion or looking a bit sort of 
unsexy. We see that with the Prada face coat. And mm. that's what I find intriguing, the way that fur, which is meant to be this like bastion of keep it your whole life, wear forever, being used in these kind of awkward ways where you can perhaps only wear it for a season. And yes. I mean, it's, it's also non-seasonal. I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not about autumn, winter anymore. Yeah. You know, the yeah. new techniques, it, it breathes, it's lighter. Mm. And this is this is credit to the uh, to the furriers and, and, and the huge huge amounts of money mm. behind the fur industry who have got into young designers yeah, they and, really yeah. and they're paying for their shows. Yeah, they're sponsoring you know, it. Yeah. It's, like it's, it's, it's clever marketing and whether, totally. you, you know, I'm not necessarily all for fur, but I, I, I admire their, their, their marketing ability to transform something yeah. that was so non-fashion, uh, you know, that you remember the Naomi Campbell image where she's Posing, yeah. I, I'd never. I'd rather go naked than wear. Go naked than wear. Come with. on, yeah. they're all wearing fur now. What's happened? Yeah. That turnaround is is the best marketing mm. exercise I've ever seen. Do you shoot fur? At we will shoot byproduct mm. at style, um, and we sometimes do shoot. Fur. How do you know they're byproduct? How can you be well, sure they are? Well, you can't. I mean, this, okay, is, this, is, this is this is you have to trust that you have to trust the source. Mm. Um, and even the source has to trust the original source because these fur houses tell everybody, you know, oh, our, our, everything's farmed, uh, you know, in, in a very specific way, and mm. uh, they don't really know. I mean, all the all the rabbit that's been produced in China, uh, the Ugh. conditions in yeah, which the, some awful. of these rabbits, it's horrific. It's awful. But that's that's anger. I mean, people don't even know An that Angora that happens. Well. They think they think it's just war, mm. but it's mm. cruel. But you know, someone told me that in Hollywood, so Los Angeles, Hollywood, whatever borough, whatever they call it, fur is prohibited, and so people they can't sell fur by law, which is very Hollywood. And then people like Maxwell, they show fur in their Hollywood store with a note that says, "Only for show, we can't sell it." And then, but you can buy it in our store in. Malibu. Ah, is that okay? Oh. So how hypocritical is that? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yes. if you really think that fur is unethical, unlegal, mm. whatever, just ban it, but mm. not. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Mm. Mm. And then sheepskin, which is different because you don't. Well, that's a, 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 a pride product, which yeah. is, mm. you know, what I sometimes wear. Mm. Um, it's different, but then people, they, 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 somebody said to me in a Starbucks, "You hate animals." I mean, I love animals, and I'm, I was almost embarrassed. I'm like, mm. this is sheepskin, it's yeah. like your shoes, you know, except yeah. that it has yes. hair. Yeah. Yeah. But then you're like, oh my God, I yeah, don't want to wear really it anymore awful. because it's, it's really weird. And now with what's happening in fashion, all this is going to disappear. People will think it's cool to wear fur. Mm. Don't you yeah, you see young girls I've in noticed, the streets you know, mm. at sort of fashion parties and events in, in the evening. So many people. Now it's back. With yeah. fur. Yeah. fur jackets, fur yeah. hats, fur yeah. things. Mm. Mm. For sure. Sure. There's so for many habit. beautiful alternatives, though. Uh, you know, I, I come out in f um, just to name for shrimps. Yeah. The brilliant fake fur that yeah. you have, an we excellent company. Yeah. Really great obsessed. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there so is great. no real reason to wear fur. Yeah. yeah. No, there's not with that. But I've had like experienced fashion journalists at Fashion Week thought that was real, which I thought was just the point where you really great like, technique. Yeah, really yeah. great technique. But also the point that people just thought that was completely normal. That I was wearing like a bright blue real fur coat. I kind of thought that was a bit weird that everyone was well, like... Well, that's the Prada and yeah. Mew Mew effect, isn't yeah. it? Those it is, it big, is. Yes. That colourful... That, that was just kind of... People thought it was completely I was normal. asked if it was real after people touching it because... Yeah, it's, it feels It's so very, real, very yeah. soft, but I think it's obviously non-real and that's mm. what I like about that. Yeah, that's what you like. Mm. So I we have to wrap up Milan. Was it a good season? Was it a, a strong I, one? We all seem to think that we've all... It's thrown up a lot of conversation. Mm. Colourful, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Colour and... Big shapes. Big and I also shape. think Milan is trying to come back because it was becoming so, so beige, mm. beige, <laughs> but also so useless. Mm. Like people didn't even want to go to Milan anymore. Yeah, that's and true. now, you know, they have a new CEO for the Fashion mm. Council, La Camera della Moda. They have. And what do you think trying about to come the way back to the design designers around. as well, like with the Armani space? Well, that's going to be difficult. I mean, the lobby of the old school mm. in Italy, it's so difficult mm. to overturn mm. that mm. you know that's not going to happen tomorrow mm. london is not, not it's not going to happen mm. in milan for a while i think don't however think they're remodernizing a little bit there mm. don't you think it's time though that um italy really started sponsoring or milan started sponsoring young designers yeah I do. you know i know that um carla franca does that what's on next mm. Mm. but 
And Mr. Somehow Armani it's never and really Mr. Armani been. is trying to give us space. But you know, yeah. Mr. Armani did the Stella Jean show, and then he was interviewed, and he was like, "Oh, I haven't seen the collection. I have no idea." I mean his PR people should tell him not to say that yeah. because it's obvious it doesn't come from him. You know, yeah. I mean, maybe we're the only one who noticed, but just... Yeah. So it's, I mean, when you sit in La Camera de la Moda board meeting, which I don't, but I know people that do, it's, with all the respect, I mean, the youngest person is 60. And yeah. I, I believe in experience in what they can bring, but mm. there's there's no room for anybody yeah. who can bring something new. Mm. And that's a breath of fresh air. A breath of fresh air. Yeah. A breath of, you know, the new. And and because also the the the, the big the big brands are owned and headed by mm. this older. Maybe that's what's exciting you know. with Jill Sander now that there's you know we're everyone's kind of waiting with bated breath to see what happens there. Maybe that's a space. But that's not Milan. That's not the real Milan. Yeah, you know, no, is no, it? I mean, I mean no. they yeah. show in Milan, but that's not Italian it's not fashion. Italian yeah. fashion yeah. And I mean, the Armanis and Versaces and Pradas and Ferragamos Cavallis and, and Cavallis, they're amazing and they're so important in fashion and we just discussed them. However. There's nothing new. Yeah, mm. they There's need to have happening. a platform like we do in London. You know, new gen, fashion east, fashion scout, fashion east, something you know. like that. Let's and do it. They <laughs> all the designers need to get behind it yeah. and actually promote it, and then find. It's a cultural thing. They're not. They're going to be killed. They're going to be it's cut off. They're not then. going to be in the system. They're not going to be. Yeah. Mm. That's why people try to go to Paris because they're mm. more open-minded. And that's why, if you're a young Italian designer, you'd probably come and do your MA in London and then show yes. in London. That's yeah. a shame, isn't mm. it? Perhaps. What are you you're saying? It's a kind no, of. It's a cultural <laughs> thing. I, you know, you, you only have to go to the Georgian Dragon down in Shoreditch, and you'll see all our young designers having pints together mm. and having a laugh together. Yeah. And and saying you really must try that factory yes. or I found these brilliant That's I sourced great. these brilliant yes. zips at X yeah. or the, those buttons are always best if you do import via So Denver. they do help each other and they oh, help each other yeah. and also they share Not work experience and it's just a, it's just culturally different. different yeah. It's a different mindset, it's a different age There's not group. a sense of competition really in London, I don't There obviously is in a, in a degree that's very simplistic. I think, but they, I think London centres the fact that it's stronger as a whole. Yeah. Yes. No, that's and you don't get that in Italy at all. It's it's all about uh, well, Italy. It's also still private companies. I mean, mm. they still owned by the founder. There's no yes. Comité Corbert. There's mm. no LVMH. When Mr. Trapani sold Bulgari to LVMH, he was attacked by the press. Like the made in Italy is going to the Qatari or the French. Mm. But then mm. he said, "I've tried, and I know because I work with him. I tried for ten years to have a consortium of Italian brands yeah. put into." They all shut the door on me. They don't mm. want to share their secrets. It's a strong lobby and it's not mm. going to change for a while. Mm. Yeah. So we need a bit more collaboration and some young, young yeah. breath in it. Young try. They are trying. They yeah. are trying. They are trying. So best of luck to them. Keep trying. That should be our takeaway. Thank you so much for a lovely, Thanks. lovely Milan roundup. I'm going to go buy some fare now. <laughs> <Okay>. oh <my> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Thank you.